peace, peace. Good morning. Well, it's morning here. It's real early. I got to work about five o'clock. So, you know, it's, uh, I look a bit exhausted, but I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. It's um, a good day. It smells like the spring is on the way after, you know, these last few weeks of winter. Um, let me say thank you all, you know, for all the tremendous support, the comments. Um, it means a lot, it really does, because oftentimes when we set out on a mission to do something that we believe is going to be significant or impactful to people, the support is not always as uh, forthcoming. Um, and so, you know, to have the support that you all are offering, that you all are um, sharing, it just, it, it means a lot. So I thank you all for even watching these videos. I know sometimes I can be a bit long-winded. To be honest, I will go on all day, all night, just because of the severity of a lot of what I'm talking about. And again, 25 years in prison um, is a long time. So there's stories upon stories upon stories. Um, and, and even my own life, uh, you know, prior to prison is a story in and of itself. But um, if you would, you know, share these videos, share them, you know, with whomever. I don't care if you know a group home, a juvenile facility, if you just know somebody that has a son or a nephew or a daughter or nieces out there wild and share them, share them, you know, because it may be something that they hear that may not be for you, but may benefit them. So share them, continue to like them, continue to subscribe, and I appreciate you for that. Uh, I want to speak about loyalty. Loyalty. That is a word that we grew up hearing. That is a word we grew up saying that we uh, understood and we lived by. On the streets, that's a part of the code, loyalty. You're loyal to your neighborhood. You're loyal to your guys. You're loyal to uh, everything, you know. We know that's not the truth. A lot of times we're not as loyal to uh, our family, but we're more loyal to the neighborhood. We're loyal to the very streets that people have died in, died for, and they show us very little loyalty in return. Or at that moment, they'll say they're loyal, they'll say they love you, and you may get into a fight and some of the guys in your neighborhood will you know, redeem you or uh, stand by your side. Is that loyalty to you or loyalty to the name or the reputation of the neighborhoods? Um, the reason it's important is because in prison uh, or prior to prison, this is the mistake uh, that we find ourselves in, misunderstanding loyalty. Most of the guys I came across had co-defendants. Co-defendants are those people that catch cases with us, catch our cases with us. Those are code defenders, code E's for short. And most of the guys that I've run into had code defenders that once they caught their cases, they very rarely stayed in touch. Very rarely stayed in touch. I knew a guy that uh, met met uh, his code defendant. I'm talking about they only knew each other for a week and they robbed the store and they was like for $275. So, uh, one of them took the money in the woods. So, you know, somewhere about the store was a wooded area, I guess. He took the money in the woods and he, you know, they both decided they would only go get the money maybe a week later, a day later. The other guy <laughs> was caught by the police, brought the police to his Cody's house, brought the police there. And so when they, you know, got their time, I think all of them got 40 years, 20 suspended, uh, for two hundred and seventy-five dollars, um, once they failed, they were separated because this is what happens when you and your co-defendants either snitch on somebody, snitching on somebody, or um, there's just bad blood fights or whatever between the two. Um, so they were separated, put in different prisons. The one that actually did the telling, because one had the paperwork and the proof, he was telling people at other prisons that his co-defendant told on him. And people will believe it because some people tell a heck of a tale. So, you know, they never actually, I think they saw each other maybe once. And that was only for like a couple of weeks. You know, the guy that actually was told on went to the same compound uh, prison 
that the other guy was at and you know they saw each other uh briefly and i think the one that did the telling um told the watch commander basically to write notes to write on request forms or notes that they feel endangered or whatever and they shipped the young you know off that spread so they didn't even know each other but they were willing to do dirt together and that was the result maybe five minutes ten at the most you run in the store you pull out the gun get back get down get down open up the register you know and you reach in the register you grab it you run a couple of days later you locked up a month or two later you have 40 years and you're doing 20. think about it think about it i knew you know i knew guys that grew up together that court cases together and the case itself caused the division uh, among the guys throughout their time and this was over a 20 year period again one of the guys was telling the entire system of guys that he knew homeboys and otherwise you know where they were from that the other guy one of the guys snitched on him they came to the same compound because what happened was several years back you know when you get locked up they will tell you that uh, we'll keep you away from your co-defendant. You know, he, you know, he told on you or whatever. And we don't want y'all to clash, et cetera. So they'll keep you away. That was automatic. And I think that there was too much involved in that statewide. I don't know, paperwork, money. I honestly don't know. But I know that at least maybe 10 years ago in the Virginia system, they came around with these forms. And the forms were, if you have a problem with anybody, put their names on this paper. They did this don't count, which means you're in the cell with someone. So you either fill that paperwork out and the police pick that paperwork up. The COs pick that up before count was cleared. So you have an hour to put on that paper, whether you don't want to be around someone, whether you're scared of someone, whatever the reason is, you have an hour to put that information down. And what happened was most guys, because they're in the cell with someone, they can't, they can't fill it out now because someone's going to look over your shoulder. Hey, man, what you write? Who name you putting down there? Huh? What? You know, so they, you know, you can't do it. So guys were running into one another. Guys were running into their co-defendants, man. And one guy came to where we were in um, Nottaway. He had been telling guys for 20 years that his co-defendant told on him. And his co-defendant was there and he had that paperwork in his back pocket. And so, you know, he was unraveling it like, look, so they spoke. They didn't fight. They didn't clash. They spoke, you know, and they addressed it like men. They sat in that child hall and they spoke. And, you know, slowly but surely they, you know, parted away. They didn't really speak too much after that, you know, understandably. And, um, you know, that was that. Uh, and even in my case, I knew a couple of the guys. I had about four co-defendants. I knew a couple of the guys. One guy, him and I were you know, for the most part, cool. You know, we were closed, I guess, for uh, several months. Um, two of the other guys, I knew one briefly, maybe for a month. The guy I was cool with knew him for a very long time. Uh, and he ultimately sat on the stand and told on me. And then one guy, you know, we had known, went to a couple go-go's together and, you know, we became pretty cool. Uh, we caught our case. Um, you know, there were, you know, there was, like I say, the guy that, the guy I was cool with, you know, he knew he actually did testify against me. Um, but that was about it. And the other guys, you know, no one testified uh, and guys did their time. I only wrote one of my co-defendants, the one that I had met for roughly a couple of months. We went to a couple go-go's together. And, you know, he seemed like a pretty good guy. You know, we wrote each other a couple times. We spoke, you know what I'm saying, a few times. And, uh, you know, I had apologized to him because I felt responsible for our case. I felt, I felt responsible. And, you know, later on I found out that his father had, had brain cancer. And I felt even worse, man, you know. But that's another tale. Um, loyalty. Um, we didn't even really know each other, to be honest with you. You know. My co-defendants actually knew each other. They had grown up together. But their bonds, because of this case, were fragmented. To this day, the couple of them really don't deal with one another. Two of them had gotten out of prison years ago, maybe six, seven years ago, and never reached back to the guy they grew up with them. Um, 
So what I'm saying is when we think about the word loyalty, when we think about the concept loyalty, my question is, who are we loyal to? Are we loyal to people who have our best interests at heart? Sincere. They may get on us. They may rag us. But if their love is sincere, mothers, fathers, aunts, cousins, uncles, those that say, leave them streets alone. Those that say, leave them fools alone. Leave that lifestyle alone. Leave that alone. They're not necessarily judging. They may, but they actually have a sincere desire to see the well-being, growth, and development of us. Are we loyal to them? Are we loyal to the ones that will put the gun in our hand? that'll put the knife in our hand, the shank in our hand, that'll turn around and tell us, sneak out your mom's house, let's go to the club. Sneak out your, 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 your father's house, let's go mess with these guys. Sneak out you know, your, 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 your baby mother's house and let's go do that. Sneak out your husband's house, your wife's house. Are we loyal to the foolish people who, when it all falls apart, aren't gonna pick up the pieces, aren't gonna carry us but so far? Mind you, almost Everybody I knew had co-defendants. And the minute they caught their time, when they got in them jails, they got that time, they went down that road, those bonds were watered down tremendously, shattered completely. Only a handful of guys are actually okay with their co-defendants right at this moment. And that is because either they grew and evolved and began to accept responsibility and understand life better and the purpose of but if they're still wilding, the saying, there's no honor among thieves, is a genuine saying. If we're tight only when it comes to foolishness, we're not going to be tight for a long time. We're only tight for that moment. That's called convenience. It's not loyalty. So, in my opinion, let us look that word loyalty up. Let us study it. Let us understand it. Let us ask ourselves, when we're acting silly with people, are we the ones misleading them? Or are they the ones misleading us? And are they worth our company? Are we worth their company? Even as adults, we find ourselves dealing with this. We're loyal to the wrong people at the wrong times. And it doesn't mean we can't be good. Be good to whoever. Be right and do right by people. What I'm saying is, who do we offer most of our time and attention to? Those that really don't care about us when it's all said and done, but they're exciting. They're fun. Uh, older brother I knew, uh, from Jersey used to say um, people are moved by fluff and flair. And I always like that. And to this day, I use it. Fluff, you know, that, 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 that sparkle, that extra, you know, and that flair, you know, bright lights, you know what I mean? That they excite, they move, they make me giggle, they make me laugh, but it's hollow. You know, the Quran says that the hypocrite he looks solid, but he is as hollow as wood, like a hollowed out trunk. You know, say his words will dazzle thee, but they don't ring true. So let us be careful with that word, that concept loyalty, and let us really sit back and ask ourselves honestly, this is people, who are we loyal to? Who do we give our time to? What do we give our attention to? And do they deserve it? If they don't, then let us find something better to give our time, attention, and our loyalty to because if we are substantial, we are good, we're strong, if we're adding on, then whoever gets our time, our attention, our loyalty, our love, our camaraderie, they getting strength, they getting beauty, they getting help, they getting, you know, a shoulder, they getting an ear, they getting a friend. Don't waste that on somebody who could care less about it when it's all said and done. The Bible says, don't cast your pearls among swine. They will trample over it. They could care less about it. They'll use you for that moment. They don't care about you when it's all said and done. So don't be the disloyal one, but don't be the one offering your time, attention, and loyalty to the one that don't care. Again, my opinion. I thank you all. I appreciate you. Again, please like, please share, please subscribe. And, uh, Continue to give me the feedback that you're offering me. Continue to give me the, you know, the questions, the topics, uh, subject matter. You know, I appreciate you, honestly. Have a good day. Be strong. You're worth it.